Hey all, Stony Creek here. Hopefully you've all had a great weekend. I want to talk a little bit about trespassing today. So it seems like trespassing has been the hot topic lately in the homesteading community. Several videos on people that's actually been vandalized, broke into, had, uh, I've seen videos where people's just blatantly trespassed to look at nature. But because of all these uh, different videos, I figured I would, uh, I wanted to chat about trespassing a little bit, but I want to take it to a different twist. I wanted to talk about uh, some of the things that you can do to help prevent trespassers or or more importantly, even uh, prevent burglaries. I'm sure a lot of these tips you've already heard before, you've read somewhere, perhaps you even employ them yourself. Of course, can't cover everything in a short video here. I'm gonna give you some of the things that we do here and hopefully give you some things to think about if you haven't already. One of the first things I wanna talk about is uh, signage. Let's go out and take a walk. I'm gonna show you the first thing that people see when they go into our driveway here. It's a little bit of a high cut here. One of the things to keep in mind as well, a lot of states are different on their rules on what signs mean, what signs you can post, what signs you can't post, and what that's going to do for you. So I'd encourage you to certainly look at your own state rules. Here in Oklahoma, they're pretty specific. But I can tell you that uh, if there are no signs posted, you'll have a whole lot harder time prosecuting someone. Not impossible. But you certainly want to make things easier for uh, your team. So if someone was driving up my driveway, here's the first thing they're going to see. Private property, no trespassing, beware of dog. And you know the first thing that they hear? That's right, they're going to hear dogs when they come out here. We actually have six dogs out here. Four of them live with goats. We've got two in one pasture, two in another area closer to the house. We also have two that are inside outside dogs that are home protectors now of course I understand not everyone can have dogs and that's okay too that's just one of the things that uh, we do so before anyone even gets past this point in the driveway my alarm system is already going off because the dogs is going to start talking okay so now we're we're up here in the driveway a little bit shady it's going to be easier to talk to y'all but you notice those uh, signs that I had back there on that post they're fairly high off the ground. They're going to be actually about my uh, chin level is the lowest one. So now you're going to ask why I've got those signs that high up in the air. And I'll tell you, coming in the driveway, if a person's in a vehicle, my driveway has a little bit of a slope coming up, they're going to be able to read those signs no problem, and I promise you they're going to be able to see them. There's no way to miss those. So that's one of the reasons I keep those particular signs a little bit higher. There's also uh, cameras. Let me show you this shot. I'm not going to show you where my cameras are. Those actually only keep uh, honest people honest anyway. But uh, I'm not going to show you where, where things are that uh, could potentially defeat my own security here. But I'm going to tell you that uh, you won't see them when you're coming, coming down my driveway here. But it'll see you. And the first camera that I've got set up, you're wondering why that's such a distance. But at that level, I'm going to be able to get the rear license plate on my, on my security camera and also the whole rear of the vehicle. Now why that's important, there's a lot of information on the back of vehicles. You've got your make, your model. Um, most people will put bumper stickers on there, other identifying marks. And then again, here in Oklahoma, we've got uh, license plates on the back, so I'm gonna be able to get that all one shot. We actually have uh, several security cameras around. They're uh, aimed at different uh, places. Of course, our goats, um, you've seen a lot of the videos with our Kiko goats, the registered goats, so some of them's uh, fairly high dollar goods so of course I've got uh, cameras in both pastures where they need to be things like that we've also got it at both entrances of the home so that's just another way to help uh, defeat a burglary or uh, at least to be able to identify if something like that was to happen so that would be another tip now what type of camera do I use you know there's a bunch of cameras out there I've got an older system there's a lot newer systems out there I'd suggest you just go through Amazon pick the one that's in the price range that you feel that's gonna best suit your needs if someone came here with ill intentions, and they decided to uh, just bypass the first beware dog sign and private property no trespassing sign. The next sign uh, you saw at the beginning of the video, but let me show you what they're going to see next. 
No trespassing, are you listening in English, or do I have to speak to you in 12 gauge? Now, of course, that sign does have quite a bit of humor involved in it, but at the same time, what do you think that that portrays? Probably a crazy, wild country guy out here that's gun happy. You know, that may or may not be the case. I don't want to give a potential person with ill intent a warm, fuzzy feeling about being out here. I want them to, to really think about, is this something that they want to do? But anyway, that's... um two of the signs that we have. Now one of the other signs, actually have an alarm system here in the house, we keep that displayed out there at the dr end of the driveway too. Now a lot of people might uh, think that that's going overboard, but at the same time, someone with ill intent is coming up uh, to the home and they're hoping to burglarize it or something else. That's just going to give them a second to, to give pause just to uh, decide if, you know, if, if our home is the one that they want to uh, attempt to do that on. Here's a couple of the concepts, and you might have heard this before. Here's my military background coming out. We have, uh, in the military, we call them hard targets, and we call them soft targets. And although it means something a little bit different in the military, you can use those same concepts uh, even here in the civilian world. A soft target is going to be one that if someone was casing your house, they would identify a soft target as someone who leaves the house the same time every day, comes back the same time every day, they don't see any signs posted up similar to the one you see behind me or certainly the ones that you saw out in the front of the driveway. They don't see any evidence of uh, security systems, things like that, gates or whatnot. So all those things would, would actually be considered a soft target. Now a hard target would be one that the person doesn't have a set schedule. Now I know those of you that work, you're going to leave same day, same time every day, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., whatever that is. You're going to be home at 5 p.m. or whatever those times are. But what I would suggest to you is vary those times up. Even if it's a 15 minutes either way, that actually gives you a half an hour slot that they don't know exactly when you're coming, when you're going. And here's another thing. I'd suggest that if you have two cars, don't take the same car at the same time every day. And that just really gets a... Uh, potential person with ill intents, their time scheduling off, so they're not going to know when you're here, when you're leaving, that sort of thing. So now, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, go on. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, some different ways to defeat the possible uh, ill intent. What's the, uh, you know, think a second, what's the typical mindset of someone that's wanting to come in and uh, trespass and burglarize your home? They want that soft target. They want to know when you're going to be there and when you're not going to be there. That's going to be the most important thing. Then they're going to want to see how easy it is to get in and out of the location. Does your driveway have a big turnaround? Can it be seen easily from the road? Um, windows, are they covered up by shrubs or do you have the shrubs cut down? You know, those are things like that. So you want to be a, a hard target. Make sure that your windows aren't covered by shrubs. What's, what's a tall shrub going to do? That's also going to hide someone's entrance into your home if they don't take a uh, door. Around the home itself, one of the things you can do is keep your uh, window blinds closed, of course, uh, when you're not going to be there. That's going to do two things. That's hopefully going to have a uh, potential person with ill intent dissuade them from wanting to uh, break into your home if they can't see what you've got on your wall. You know, they can't look in there and see the nice TV or, or nice uh, china that uh, you've got up on the walls. They might not want to hassle with breaking into your home. They're not going to know if once they break in, if it's going to be uh, worth their effort to do that or if they'd be better off just going into the next home. Now, the second reason you want to do that, it's also energy conservation, especially with these temperatures going up. You close those uh, windows and blinds, you have your air conditioner running all day, you're going to lose less through uh, those windows. I don't care if you've got triple paint or not. So that would be a good way to uh, conserve energy on that. Now here's another thing that I'd like to chat about, especially uh, summertime and this weekend that we just left. Family vacations. What's one of the first things that we want to do? We want to get on Facebook and tell the world we're getting ready to go to the lake. We're getting ready to have a good time and and you wish that they were going to be there, but since they can't, you're going to have fun without them. Now what I would contend is don't put that on Facebook. Wait until you get back, post all the fun pictures that you had. You know, maybe tell very close family that you're going if you want to do that. Maybe they want to go with you. But I wouldn't uh, broadcast that out online that you're going to be gone. 
Now, I know that some people do that, and I'm certainly not going to judge one way or the other. You know, everyone's got their own, own opinion and their own mind of things. But just one of the things to keep in mind, you know, especially in the digital age, if people know that you're going to be gone, that's when they're uh, more likely going to uh, take advantage of that situation. And they're going to take advantage when they know that you're going to be gone for an extended period of time. This is a crazy statistic that most people don't want to hear, but you can look it up. It's a true thing. A lot of the burglaries that do happen when they uh, catch the perpetrator come to find out it's either a friend of the family, a family member itself, or a friend of a friend that got told. So when you think that uh, you've got that tight inner circle of people that you can trust, sometimes just uh, crazy things happen. Um, who knows what goes on inside their mind? I, I can't answer that. But just one of those things to keep in mind. Um, you certainly do read about that all the time. I got burglarized and my grandpa's 1877 rifle got stolen, great grandma's jewelry got stolen, but I couldn't believe it, they left the TV on the wall. Well, you know what? Who took those things knew exactly what you had, exactly where they were. Someone knew about it. It was either a family member, a friend of the family, close friend of the family, or one of those two circles told a third party that shouldn't have even known that you were not at home. So that's one of those things uh, just keep in mind. In uh, military terms, they'd call that OPSEC, operational security. So just you know, next time you go on vacation, again, summer's going to be the time to do that. Just kind of keep that in mind. Who are you going to tell? Who's going to know? And who's going to have access to your home while you're gone? The last thing I just wanted to touch base with you on, I don't want, uh, I don't want you, any of you all to get the wrong idea. I certainly don't want you to feel like a prisoner in your own home or, or a prisoner on your own property. If you're, you know, I don't want you to feel like uh, you're scared or, or be intimidated if anyone strange comes on your place. All I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, give you some helpful tips that, that might, uh, again, make you that hard target, not make you a soft target anymore. Give someone with ill intent a reason to pause, a reason to think about, is this property or is this home the home that I'm going to invade, burglarize, take someone's sense of security away, or is this a home that my efforts would be better spent elsewhere? So those are the, the things that I want you to take away from this because I, want you, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. You know, you have to trust me when I tell you I'm certainly not a prisoner on my property. But, uh, you know, I just want to be able to uh, throw some, some ideas out there for a peace of mind for you. Just something to think about. A lot of these things, you know, you might have already been thinking about. A lot of these things you might already employ. And, and you know, kudos to you for doing that. I do know that this is, you know, again, kind of a, a crazy, uh, peacocks are trying to help me out. I know this is, you know, kind of a crazy uh, concept, especially for homesteaders. But I'll tell you, for homesteaders, those are things that we need to think about. Because out here in the country, what are the things that you can do to help uh, make yourself that hard target? Well, guys, as always, I do appreciate you watching. I appreciate you taking some uh, time with me uh, this evening. And, and hopefully... Uh, we can share ideas, you know, among one another. Put down in the comments uh, some things maybe I didn't mention that you do. I'm always looking for uh, better security tactics even uh, here for my place. But uh, until next time, I'll see you next video.